The build-up for Night of Champions begins as Raw goes to Greensboro, North Carolina. Woo! That is the good news. The bad news is Ric Flair probably will not be there. So yeah, we might be in Ric Flair's hometown, but we're no getting Ric Flair. What we are getting though is another edition of Garbage, another edition of the red brand. And I know this is supposed to feel fresh. I know the brand, the draft split has just happened, but I'm looking at what's advertised for tonight and everything. It feels stale already. I'm not even sure how that can be, but legit, like two weeks after the draft, it does look like it's just a normal edition of Monday Night Raw. It looks like the same shit we've been watching for the past couple of years. Doesn't make any sense, but let's go through the card. So tonight also, we might have the return of Alexa Bliss, and normally that would excite me a little bit, but it doesn't really do anything for me anymore. Alexa Bliss, so what? She's hot, so what? You know, <laughs> so what? Yeah, she's she's attractive, but I mean, her returns have been garbage lately. I'm not really excited about the prospect of seeing Alexa Bliss return. I still think Bray Wyatt completely ruined her career, so, you yeah, know, good luck doing anything with Alexa Bliss when she returns. But she is apparently scheduled for Night of Champions, and then that would tell me that she's probably going to debut and return before Night of Champions, so maybe it will be tonight, because we're running out of weeks before we go to Saudi Arabia. Only two more Raws before we jet down in Saudi Town. So we'll see. It's either going to be this week or next week, you would imagine. But we've got Cody Rhodes on tonight's show. He is going to respond to Brock Lesnar about the WWE Night of Champions Challenge. I mean, what is there to respond to? Cody Rhodes is obviously going to come out and ask everybody what do they want to talk about. We know what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about Brock Lesnar and he's going to accept it. He's going to accept it. The whole feud for me was finished when Cody Rhodes won. It, it, it made no sense. Cody Rhodes should not have won that match. He should have lost to Brock Lesnar. And then he needs to try and get the win back. You know, he needs to try and prove he's the underdog. He needs to prove that he can beat the beast. When Brock Lesnar's already lost to Cody. So what does Cody gain now? If he beats him more convincingly, he gains nothing. He's already beaten Brock Lesnar. I, I can't believe they've done that. He could have done a no DQ. He didn't have to have Cody lose. But, I mean, to have Cody win, I just what, what motivation does Cody have to beat Brock now? He, he doesn't have any. It doesn't make any sense to me. But we know that Cody's going to accept the challenge. And we're going to get Rhodes versus Brock Lesnar at Night of Champions. Hopefully it's better than the Backlash match. Because that was kind of disappointing. Uh, Becky Lynch will address... WWE Hall of Fame or Trish Stratus. I feel like that's all wrestling is these days. It's basically something happens the week before and then you set it up for the person that was on the receiving end of an attack to address the other person. I mean, if McMahon came out and screwed Stone Cold Steve Austin, do you think that the preview would read Stone Cold looks to address McMahon? It'd be No, Stone Cold would be looking for revenge. Stone Cold would be out looking for a body. Stone Cold would be looking to stop fucking mud holes in Vince McMahon. He wouldn't be out there asking the crowd, hey guys, what do you want to talk about? You know, he wouldn't be doing that. No, it, it, they make it sound so fucking cheap and so phony. Oh, we're going to respond. We're going to address. No, what about look for revenge? What, what about Becky Lynch is out for fucking blood tonight? How about that? No, she's going to address Trish Stratus. What's she going to do? Is she going to go to her house? Is she going to address her? Is she going to undress her? Maybe that sounds a bit better. But no, Becky Lynch is going to address Trish Stratus. Who cares? Who fucking cares? I mean, even address. Why can't they use the term call out? Even even call out sounds a bit more interesting than address. Oh, I'm going to call you out. You know, at least it sounds a little bit, I don't know, it sounds a little bit more interesting, a little bit more feisty. I mean, this address pitch, it's just, it's cookie. It's cookie cutter. It's garbage. So yeah, Becky Lynch will address Trish and, and I'm sure they'll set up a match. Will it be at Night of Champions or, or will it be somewhere where they can show a little bit more skin? Who knows? But this match is going to happen. You know it. I know it. We all know it. Speaking of matches that are going to happen, a match that we do not want to happen, Sinsuke Nakamura versus The Miz. Honest to God, the thought of having to watch anything Miz related again absolutely kills me. And I'm actually, I actually used to like The Miz. I was a fan of The Miz, but I don't know what happened. Maybe it was just having the same garbage guy shoved down our throats for, what, 13 years now? I'm just tired of The Miz. I am sick of The Miz. I feel like he's been in the company non-stop. I feel like he never takes time off. I feel like he's always there. And he's changed absolutely nothing up. I get it. 
He had that little face run where he was, um, you know, having Flair manage him and he stole the figure four or whatever. But it's always been the same fucking guy. It's always been the Miz. It's been the same damn character now for, like, the entire WWE run, pretty much. Especially since he won the WWE title for the first time. It's the same guy. And every time we see a Miz TV, I want to blow my brains out. It's, simple. it's really that simple, man. I'm done with the Miz. I don't want to see the Miz. I hope Nakamura beats the Miz. And there you go. I'm sorry, Miz. I used to like you, but by God, I don't know. I don't know what happened. I don't know what the turning point was, but something clicked in my head, and I thought, you know what? I, I just can't do the Miz anymore. I just cannot do him. I thought the last time I thought he was okay was probably when he had the world title and he was trying to avoid Bobby Lashley. I mean, I thought that was pretty cool. I thought that was interesting. That was enjoyable. And every time they went to like the top of the hour, Adam Pearce would want the Miz to wrestle, and the Miz was coming up with an excuse not to go and face Lashley. I mean, I thought that was pretty entertaining. But ever since he, he lost out to, to Lashley, the Miz for me, double thumbs down, man. The guy, nah, I am actually sick of the guy. I don't know what it would take. I, I don't think just simply moving him to SmackDown would work. But at least it would be a new it would be a new environment for him, you know. I just, no. I, I mean, hopefully he goes to Hollywood legit. None of this crap straight to DVD movies. Hopefully the Miz goes to Hollywood and he takes like five years off and then we don't have to see him because I, I'm sick of seeing him. Uh, we've got the WWE Women's Tag Team Champions Liv Morgan and Raquel Rodriguez fe defending against Chelsea Green and Sonya Deville. I mean, whichever team wins here, it doesn't really matter. Th these tag belts are fucking horrendous. There, there is no tag teams in the WWE. There's no female tag teams. There's no need for tag belts. And the fact that now SmackDown's got the NXT women's tag belts, it is overkill. You've got so many belts and you've got no stars to hold them. It's it's <laughs> it's really sad. I mean, Liv Morgan, it wasn't even that long ago Liv Morgan was getting this big push and she was a crazy chick who would, you know, face Ronda Rousey with like no no consideration for her health. She she thought she could go toe to toe with Ronda. She was jumping off things. You know, Liv Morgan was crazy. Liv Morgan was willing to do whatever she had to do. She'd sacrifice her body. We're supposed to believe that Liv is the next big star. Watch me. And all we did was watch her transcend into a meaningless tag team with Raquel Rodriguez. And now the tag team champs but holding these belts don't mean shit I mean Sasha Banks and Naomi certainly didn't think that these belts mean shit they walked out so that's that's how important these belts are these belts are worthless the fact that Liv Morgan has one doesn't mean crap I, I can take a belt out of my wardrobe right now and it means the same as Liv Morgan's belt it means nothing it means absolutely fuck all so yeah um, I would prefer to see new champions here but I'm not sure that... I don't really like the partnership of Chelsea Green and Sonya Deville. I thought Chelsea Green worked better with Carmella. But as we know, she's pregnant. She's gone. She's done. Uh, but I don't know. Maybe Chelsea Green could could go solo. I, I just don't really like the, the combination of the two. But it is what it is. Uh, WWE Intercontinental Champion Gunther makes official debut tonight as a Raw superstar. Does that mean he's going to compete? Or does that mean he's just going to turn up and look at the other two members of Imperium in disgust? Could you blame him, really? Other two members constantly lose. This is this is a this is a faction that claim the ring is sacred, and all they do is lose in the fucking ring. Isn't that making the ring less sacred? The fact that they can never win a match. I mean, why doesn't Gunther call them out? And and I know people didn't like the whole gimmick where he would chop that Kaiser guy after he lost, but I think that actually made sense. Gunther's supposed to be the, the ring general, you know, he's supposed to be this badass, he's supposed to be this guy that takes it serious, winning is life and death to him, so if his faction member's losing all the time, that looks bad in him, so it makes sense for me to Gunther to chap the shit out of somebody, or, or chap, slap the shit out of somebody, but they, they, they done away with that. Why, I do not know. I guess we'll see what Gunther's got to say tonight. Will he make his in-ring debut, or is he just going to come and talk on the microphone? He's not very good at talking on the microphone, so hopefully he, um, hopefully he does, he, he hopefully does a Jungle Boy Jack Perry, and he just avoids the microphone, he runs away from it. If you don't know what I'm talking about, guys, you can check out a video I made earlier today on the channel. And last but not least, I think the only thing to address tonight is there's going to be a battle royal to determine the new number one contender 
to the WWE Intercontinental Champion, Gunther for Night of Champions. So whoever wins will face Gunther at Night of Champions. One last final thing. I know we've got this world title tournament. It will end at Night of Champions. It's going to be Seth Rollins from Raw taking on AJ Styles from SmackDown. But I'm assuming AJ is not going to be appearing on Raw until Night of Champions and the same with Seth Rollins, he is not going to appear on SmackDown. If that is the case, if that is the case, then why did they end the tournament so early? Why, if they weren't going to have these two people interact with each other, why didn't they just cut out all the SmackDown people and just make the tournament Raw exclusive and you could have had the tournament last up to the last week, the last Raw before Night of Champions. Now, some of you are going to say, oh, you can't do that because we need to find out who's going to be in the final so those two can get some sort of feud, some sort of rivalry going. And that does make a bit of sense, but if it's going to be two guys from different shows and they can't make a rivalry out of that anyway because they're on different shows, then what difference does it fucking make? You could have literally just had this Raw tournament go all the way up to the final Raw where you had the last two semi-final matches on the final Raw, and then we determined who the winner was. That's what you could have done, but no. Now, with two Raws remaining, and two Smackdowns remaining, we, we know both finalists, but they can't show up on either show. So we've got both finalists, but they can't do nothing because one's on Raw and one's on Smackdown. Makes absolutely no sense. I mean, even a moron can see this, but I guess WWE's full of fucking morons that are blind. I don't know what to tell you. That's your Raw preview, guys. I'm not looking excited for Raw. I mean, wrestling is dead. Wrestling is absolutely dead. We're, what, six weeks after WrestleMania, and there, there's nothing to talk about. I probably Nothing will probably get exciting until, what, Royal Rumble time again. Maybe Cena will come back for SummerSlam. I think Edge said he's going to retire around SummerSlam, which I hope is not true, but that appears to be the date he was given. Uh, it's just not interesting, guys. What is there to like about wrestling? This draft has just happened and already it's dead. It's absolutely dead. I mean, I'm a little bit... I would be intrigued if SmackDown... If Roman Reigns actually maybe turned up on SmackDown on a weekly basis and we could actually see a title picture, then, then maybe there'd be something interesting, but... There's not. We don't get to see Edge challenge for the belt. We don't get to see Bobby Lashley challenge for the belt. Because Roman Reigns can't be bothered to show up. And now it turns out when he does show up, he's going to challenge for the tag team titles. He's not even going to defend his belt at Night of Champions. Like, what a joke. Roman Reigns is actually working a show. But we're not getting him defending the belt. Because they probably think, well, we've got the world title belt being crowned at Night of Champions. So we don't need the other belt. Is that what they're going to do going forward? They're only going to give us one title match per pay-per-view? I guess it's better than the zero title matches we've been getting for the past, what, year and a half. But still, fucking sucks, man. That's it, guys. That's your Raw preview. Raw's going to be shite. That's a spoiler. You know, as, um, as Paul Heyman used to say, that's not a prediction. That's a spoiler. There's my spoiler. Raw's fucking crap. You heard it here first. Catch you in the next one. Peace.